Hi, my name is Steven Nunez. I'm an instructor and developer at the Flatiron School, and today we'll be talking about hacking your learning with pair programming. For two years, I taught myself how to program, um, reading anything that I could find on the internet. Uh, I got invited to a code retreat where you get to work with other developers to solve a problem, uh, solving Conway's game of life. And through that, I have experienced pair programming. I got to work with really great developers on a problem, and in that one day, I learned more than I did in the two years by myself. It was really incredible. In this video, we're gonna talk about the benefits of pair programming, how to pair program in person and remotely, in addition to how to deal with issues when they come up. I'm obsessed with finding shortcuts. Uh, learning to program is really hard because you're juggling a dozen concerns. You're trying to figure out if your syntax is right, you're trying to figure out if you're using the right algorithm, trying to find the right gem. When you pair program, you're spreading the load across two brains. So things that normally would get you stuck, like syntax errors, uh, don't happen when you pair program, letting you focus on the really hard problems, on solving the problem, on building the app, and on learning. In pairing, we have two roles, a driver and a navigator. Imagine you're taking a road trip. Um, you have someone who's on Google Maps and another person who has their hands on the steering wheel. The person on Google Maps is responsible for figuring out what exit to take. They're thinking 20 minutes ahead, while the person who's driving is focused on the here and now, how much pressure to actually put on the gas. Uh, what's that got to do with programming? Uh, when you're pairing with someone, you can have someone in the navigator role who says, uh, we need a validation here and the driver will actually go and implement it. They're the person who's typing on the computer, they're the person who's writing the code that uh, needs to be written to solve the problem. There's a lot of talking when you pair, and it's really exhausting. So make sure you take breaks and switch roles. I switch roles about maybe once every half hour, and to take breaks, I use the Pomodoro technique, meaning you work for 25 minutes and then take a five minute break. While you're pairing, feel free to ask your pair questions if you feel they have a misperception about something. As you're building something out, you may notice that the language that they use might not be uh, absolutely precise, so you want to ask them follow-up questions. That's sort of your job as a pair to make sure that the person you're working with is getting everything that you want them to get. A lot of the power from pair programming comes from your willingness to be vulnerable. Uh, what I mean by that is you have to be willing to ask the question. You have to be willing to ask your pair and sort of surface the fact that you don't get something. And typically that is not a great feeling. Uh, you may be uh, reluctant to do that because you'll say, my pair will think I'm stupid. But in reality, that's the benefit of pair programming. You have a problem right in front of you. You have code that you do not understand. And by understanding this code, you will learn the concept, right? You're not learning it in a vacuum. You're learning it with someone inside of some bigger context. So definitely be willing to be vulnerable, and that's where the big benefit for pair programming is. When pairing in person, you're gonna use one computer. So pick the newest computer to work on. You can have the second computer nearby in case you have to look something up, but the focus should be on that one computer. Uh, a couple of considerations when working with someone in person is uh, be mindful of personal space. Some people have a higher tolerance for how close they can be to someone. I've had pairs who have literally been shoulder to shoulder with me, um, and that's fine. Uh, and other people who need, uh, you know, need a foot of distance. So just be mindful of that when you pair with someone. And then also be mindful of your hygiene. So get some gum, make sure you put deodorant on in the morning, um, and your experience should be awesome. When you're remote pairing, fire up your favorite screen sharing software. So jump on a Google Hangout or a Skype session and share your screen. Um, there you'll pull down the code, work on it as the driver, and then when you're done, you'll commit the code, push it to GitHub, and then have the new driver pull that down. They'll share their screen and you go back and forth that way. Um, as a navigator, it's really easy to get distracted because no one's watching your screen. Uh, so be mindful of that and stay with it. The benefit of pair programming is that you're both focused on the same problem. Whenever you involve humans, things get complicated. Why can't everything be just computers? Uh, I want you to have a certain mindset when you pair a program with someone. I want you to be greedy, but not entitled. I want you to ask questions. I want you to go deep. I want you to be curious. 
but if your pair wants to move on, move on. So as a student who's learning to program, should you, pro should you pair program all the time? Should you pair program sometimes, once a week? Um, I think, uh, in, in my experience, it's been really useful to have students pair more often than not. Um, when you're first learning to program, there are a lot of moving parts that you're trying to just get your head around. So there's the syntax of a language, the concepts of a language, the uh, putting the building blocks together to make something useful and fun. And by yourself, you may get stuck on something that doesn't have much value. So for instance, if you get stuck on, I don't know, the syntax of an if statement for some reason, and you spend a half an hour just debugging that you missed an end, is that really the best use of your time? I'd say no. Right? As an instructor, I want to see people working on the hard problems, actually moving the blocks and putting them together, and putting together an interesting and fun solution. Um, with a pair, it's very rare you'll get stuck on the small things. What you will get stuck on are the actual hard things. I don't understand how, this, uh, how uh, methods work. I don't understand what return values are. I don't understand um, you know, the difference between map and select, right? The, the really hard things, where it's not syntax, but it's actually the concept. And the best way to get that, I think, is through pairing. Uh, because you get a bunch of exposure, and early on, the most important thing is figuring out what don't I know, right? Going from that space of um, unconscious, in, uh, unconscious incompetence, where you don't know how terrible you are, to, the, uh, to conscious incompetence, where you know how bad you are. Uh, that's the space you want to live in, and you want to increase that, that sphere of things you don't know so you can start attacking them one by one. Uh, so you get exposed to more if you pair. So pair all the time. Uh, so my first professional pairing experience was with, oh man, yeah, my first professional pairing experience was with David Black, uh, author of The Well-Grounded Rubyist. Um, I had just gotten hired by a consultancy, and I was on a project with him, and when you first get your developer job, you're going to want to learn all of the tools that they use, and you're going to want to learn everything that you're working on in this project. So my hair is on fire trying to learn all of jQuery and figuring out how to use Vim. And I sit with David Black, and if you know anything about Vim, Vim is a text editor that is not like anything else. It's like you can press letters all you want and nothing will happen if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, so I, I, I look like an idiot kind of like like typing next to David Black, this world-renowned like speaker and author, um, and I, I was a, pretty much the biggest moron in the office that day. Uh, the side effect of it, though, was that uh, with this newfound, I guess, shame, I went home and practiced a lot. I got really good at Vim. I got really good at my tools. Um, and that, that, I think, is, again, one of the benefits of pair programming, that you have this pressure, this kind of like social pressure to be good. Uh, because you're on the hook for, uh, you know, working with someone and you have to get good fast. So uh, my first professional pairing experience was uh, not great, but the next ones were awesome. In this video, we learned about pair programming. We learned about the driver and navigator roles. And we learned about how to be a good pair by asking tons of questions. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and good luck pair programming.